now that we have our panel up to date and loaded with the group settings and the initial configuration, we're going to open up our BACnet settings tool. So for this, first things you're going to do is go to property. And this will give you whether this will give you what your IP address to connect is and put in your appropriate IP address. For us, I'm left at the factory default, so that's what's there. Then we'll go ahead and acquire settings. This is going to pull the settings that we already have in here. These are going to be default. This back, this LAN2 can be set from here or set at the uh, through the touchscreen on an AE200. Our BACnet port number, 47808, that is, leave that at default unless told otherwise by the system integrator. We can select whether we're going to display Celsius or Fahrenheit using time synchronization or not to allow for it to synchronize time with the BMS system. Um, I'm not going to be changing anything on this page. So our group settings, this shows what our units are and where they're connected. This can also be a handy cross-reference for the system integrator because this unit number here, this is going to be what MNET address or address is are associated with the group. In this case, I've kept the MNET address and the group address the same, but there can be situations where these can be flip-flopped. This, this is set ahead of time in the initial settings tool. So once that's loaded here, we'll actually have some units to look at for the BACnet settings. In BACnet settings, we have our device instance number, what, are, what we've named this. In this case, I've named it Training Lab AE200. Here's some other settings. Dry mode, this will enable the selection of the dehumidification or dry mode, which does not control to humidity, it just tries to suck moisture out of the air. Up here in the Northwest, we don't use this, so I leave that box unchecked. Fan speed mid one and mid two, those are partial fan speeds that are applicable to certain units. I just generally leave that off too. Not reflect communication error to alarm signal. If there's a comm error, I want, it, I want to see it on the front end. This box is use operation mode state auto. What this does is I send a, the BMS system is going to send a mode, set, mode setting and then they're going to read back what's on the thermostat. If this is unchecked, when they read, when they send auto, they'll read back either heat or cool depending on which active mode the thermostat's in, even though it's still auto at the thermostat. If this box is checked, they'll send auto and they'll read auto. So that way they can know that the thermostat is actually set in auto mode. This is a preference on what they would want. So ask this during the integration. If they don't tell you anything or you don't have a chance to ask, go ahead and check this box ahead of time because then you won't get the complaint that, hey, it's reading back heat when I've got it set to auto. You'll get, I don't know which mode it is in. So the complaints are unavoidable, but this one will, this one at least makes, makes sense that I sent auto, I have auto, there we go. So network and device, this is something you're generally not gonna touch. COV notification settings, also something you're not gonna play with unless specifically told otherwise. Event notifications, the same thing. Frankly, if any of these need to be changed, tell your integrator how to download this tool and show them how to use it and they can play around with these settings for themselves. Objects, this is where we should, tell the contractor what they can and cannot see. So we've got our on-off state setup, alarm signal, operation modes, fan speeds, room temp, set temp. This one is checked right now, but it needs to be unchecked. This set temp is only applicable if the old model compatibility mode is on. This is listed in the BACnet manual on my link drive for the AE200 and it is only compatible with single set point, old compatibility mode. Prohibit modes, these allow, these allow for the building automation contractor to lock out operation at the thermostat of certain items. So our MNET communication state, 
well they'll get in they'll get an error code anyway so we'll leave that one unchecked so they're not getting overloaded air direction i like to leave this one up to the thermostat itself that way the end user can control the vanes instead of the building automation contractor doing that set temp cool and set temp heat are applicable if you're doing dual set point control which is the default for all new equipment you can set single set point at the thermostat in, if you're going to be using that, set temp auto is the one you would use, not this set temp up here. This is only for old model compatibility mode. High limit and low limit setback temps. These are if you're using the setback function of the AE200. Generally, if the billing contractor is integrating this, they're not, they're going to write their own setback sequence because they don't want to see that the unit is on when, during unoccupied hours, even though it's in a setback mode. Ventilation mode, if you have Lossnay units, this is worth grabbing. We don't have any Lossnays here, so I'm not going to do that. Um, air to water stuff, this doesn't apply. And then you get electric energy usage. If you're using the power monitoring options, that's applicable. We're not, so leave those unchecked. We don't want controls contractors saying, hey, I've got these points, what do they do? We'd rather just not give it to them. Thermal on off state, I would always check this one. This tells you whether or not the fan coil is actively heating or cooling. Doesn't tell you which mode it's in, doesn't tell you which what it's trying to get, but it will tell you if it's actively calling or not. Our error code detail there, and then we've got some other stuff, some uh, trend objects, that have to do with the energy uh, apportionment. So I'm going to save the settings. Now I'm going to send my settings to the controller. Oh, it popped up an error that this is an online mode. This is because I've previously set this panel up. You may not run into that the first time you do, you set this up. If it's in online mode, you need to set your mode settings. Go ahead and click the button for offline and hit set. May I set offline mode? Yes. We hit refresh. It shows current mode is offline. This means I can send my settings now. There we go. So after the settings are sent, we need to go mode setting and put it back into online mode. Once you set this, it will take a while. The AE200, it'll search for devices, do some other stuff, and then it will shut down and power back up. So hit the set button, you know, walk away for five, 10 minutes, come back and open this back up and hit refresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and set. It's gonna give me a warning that it will automatically restart the AE200. I'm gonna press yes. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and come back on after this has reset. Okay, we're back. It's been a few minutes. The panel has restarted. So now I'm gonna to go to my mode setting and take a look and make sure that it's online. I'm gonna hit refresh. So current mode is set to online. This means that LAN 2, where the building automation contractor will be hooking up at, is now active. So time to give them a call and make sure that they're seeing everything. So hope that answers all your questions. The BACnet function book on the MyLink drive is a great resource with much more explanation on the different settings and something that I would not hesitate to give to the building automation contractor so they can take a look at what the integration is going to be and figure out which points they want and so they know how to control it correctly.